Hi everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to paint the kitchen by hand. We start by removing the magnets and handles and anything that can be removed other than the doors. So the doors are going to be uh, left on the cabinet for a reason. Because we're painting this kitchen on site, unlike a workshop where we have plenty of room, so we can lay them flat and leave them to dry properly. Uh, on site, we don't have that luxury. So um, the more of the doors we can keep on the cabinets, the easier for us it is to paint. I did have to take uh, down a couple of the doors to make some minor adjustments. But other than that, I kept all of them and I painted them that way. Now, once this is done, we have to key the surface. I'm using 240 sandpaper. Uh, we don't have to go mad about uh, Sanding it, it's just about providing a key for the new paint to stick. And then once we're done with that, we can go ahead and start painting. Now one thing you need to know, and I'll show later in the video, we have to thin down the paint. When it comes to painting cabinets, the thicker the paint, the more brush marks you're going to get. So obviously we're trying to keep it as, uh, as flat finish as possible. Uh, the intention of that is to leave a few brush marks so if you go close you can actually see it, that it's been hand painted it keeps it more authentic that way but what you don't want to end up with is a big heavy coat um, if you do that you're going to end up with deep brush marks which you can notice from from a distance and that will be quite ugly so we're trying to get a, a nice and fine finish done this is also the reason why I'm avoiding doing the kickboards at this stage because um, that's where normally you get some uh, some debris and dirt and whatnot. So we're trying to keep our brushes and rollers clean. And then once the cabinets have been done, the last thing I do is, is go over and do the kickboards. Again, you'll see that later at the video. So the, the process here is quite simple. We apply uh, uh, an even coat with a, with a roller. And then we use a brush to brush it off and get a nice and flat finish. And you can actually see how how much more reflective that coat because you can actually see me in the door. On the inside of the cabinets, uh, we can use some tape. Now, I personally try and use as little tape as possible. And that's not because I'm cheap. The reason I try and use as little tape as possible is because sometimes tapes bleed. And then if you put, if you tape everything, you can get cocky thinking that everything's taped and protected but if the tape bleeds it gets behind it and then you have to clean it so uh, if you don't have tape you're obviously forced into cutting in and then making sure that you're not going where well, you're not supposed to be painting that's why I keep uh, a bunch of uh, wet wipes around me so I can wipe it however where the, those hinges were I had to and these are quite of annoying hinges to work with Honestly, I'm not a big fan of those hinges, uh, mainly because they're quite difficult to paint around, but also they very they offer very little adjustability. And even though I haven't built the kitchen myself, uh, sometimes when you repaint kitchens, it's quite nice to go back and realign all the doors. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a kitchen that gets a daily use. Uh, you know, most hinges, most cabinet door hinges would offer some sort of uh, adjustability so you can go and realign the hinges it gets a much better finish but these ones were very you know as i said they're quite they offer very limited uh adjustability so not a big fan of them but i won't spend too much time complaining about that instead let's go ahead and paint those two drawers now in a second you'll be able to see a good shot on why it's important to brush your paint after you've rolled it but before we get to do that, we need to paint the back of that face. And in order to do that, we need to first cut in around those brackets. And also that's that's the reason why I have the tape on the bottom of it, because that's where it meets the, the back of the face. Kind of an awkward thing to get, so we had to use tape. Again, I'd still advise to be careful. You don't want that paint to bleed under. Don't forget to do the sides, top and bottom before you brush in. That's why... Uh, you can make sure that you don't end up with bronze and then we do the front you can clearly see here how we get those bubbles which is a normal thing that's uh, when you apply oil based paint with the 
foam roller, which is what you're supposed to be using. That's a normal thing to happen. But then you use the brush and you get rid of them and look at that beautiful finish that we can get. This is so smooth. Now, on those drawers previously, we had already painted the frames. So that's why I was, I was able to paint them there. Uh, but when it comes to painting the frames, we have to remove the drawers. And you'll see there's some footage later down in the video where you can see how I remove the drawers. But you got to get rid of the drawers so you can paint the frames. And it's a bit of an awkward thing. You can see me here lying on my on my back. And this is what I was talking to you about. Uh, you don't need tape everywhere, providing that you can cut in and keep a straight line. And then once you've applied two coats on the frames, you can put the drawers uh, back on and paint them that way or you can just put them uh, on, a, on a pair of saw horses and paint them there that's exactly what I did here uh, when it comes to painting kitchens it's always a bit tricky of organizing with what to put and where but the more kitchens you do the, m the more you systemize uh, how to do those things so I was able to do a couple of drawers per day while I was doing the doors and I was mixing it matching it that way and the beauty of uh, hand painted kitchens is not only that you can change the color down the line, which is exactly what that customer had done, but it also allows you to have a mixture of colors, and that means any colors that you, you'd like. So, on this particular one, these sets of um, tow units, we were having them in a different color, slightly lighter than the rest of them. Now the color that we're using here is called Elephant's Breath from Fire and Ball, which in my opinion is a weird name for paint, but hey, I'm not the one that came up with it, so blame Fire and Ball for that. But here's another question that I get asked all the time when it comes to repainting kitchens. The question is why don't I use dust sheets? And the answer to that is because they have dust on them. And we're using oil-based paint, which takes about six to eight hours to be touch dry. So in the meantime, if we were to create dust in the room, it's highly likely that it will get stuck on those doors. So instead of using dust sheets, I'm using uh, masking paper, which I tape on the floor. And also, I carry a lot of wet wipes with me in case I'm, I make uh, there's a, a droplet of paint or anything that I need to clean. Now, this is what I was mentioning earlier in the video. We need to thin down the paint. And this is the aforementioned Elephant's Breath paint, but we thin it down so we can get a nicer finish and you may have noticed that the paint is actually Johnson's instead of Faro and Bow. Now Johnson's have the licensing to mix Faro and Bow colors which is a good, great tip for you guys uh, DIYers especially. You can get Faro and Bow colors mixed in Johnson's because they have the licensing to do so and uh, it will be a lot cheaper. Uh, also the, the other reason we don't use Faro and Bow is because Faro and Bow don't have um, oil based paints and on a kitchen like that, it's actually better to use oil-based paint. It's it's much more durable. Yes, it does stink for a couple of days. Uh, it's easier for me to use water-based paints because I can do, them, do the cabinets quicker. But in terms of durability, it's actually better. And then if you end up going to Johnson's Decorator Center and tell them that I'm sending you there, um, they'll probably say to you, who the hell is that guy? <laughs> or maybe they won't. Maybe by the time you've seen that video, it's already done 20 million views and they actually do know who I am. So worth asking. It's also worth considering liking this video or perhaps subscribing because if we were to pump these numbers up, I would certainly be able to negotiate some discounts that I can share with you. So that's a thought. But in the meantime, let me tell you a cool story about this house. And in order to do that, we need to go back in time to 2019 BC. BC stands for before COVID. <laughs> so um, five years ago, I was contacted to paint a kitchen and I accepted the job. So I ended up on this, in this house. And at that time, that house was just being finished. And it was a cool house. Uh, my customers, they have a background in interior design. So they've incorporated a lot of cool features in this house. Uh, not to a point where it's over overwhelming uh, and it's quite a nice flow the house has but it also has some 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 cool elements to it like the exposed concrete wall and there's some cladding in 
in particular rooms so I remember even then I was thinking that this is probably one of my favorite houses I've ever worked on um, however in 2019 I finished this kitchen and that was it I was never able to see the the house finished because what, what else am I gonna do there <laughs> So I, I was very grateful that they called me back five years down the line to repaint the kitchen, because um, not not just because repainting the kitchen. I like that. I was I would really enjoy that that job. I don't get to do a lot of painting nowadays because of all the furniture I make. But uh, every once in a while, I like the the change of pace. But also, I really appreciated the fact that I was able to to go back and see the finished house, and it's. And I honestly gotta tell you, it's probably the, my favorite house I've ever, I've ever worked on, and I worked on a lot of cool houses. What makes it so special, in my opinion, is the fact that the people built it in order, uh, with the intent of living there. It wasn't so much about return on investments and uh, adding value or whatnot. It was just about living in the house. And once the cabinets are done, this is exactly what I was telling you about earlier in the video. We paint the kickboards. And I like to do it last because um, due to the nature of where the kickboard is, that's when you get a lot of hair and a lot of uh, cobwebs and all kinds of stuff in there. You can actually see me cleaning it, even though I've, I've rubbed it down and hoovered it. So uh, that's why I leave it to the last. And then once that's all done, we have to put everything back together. So here what I'm doing is I'm putting back the drawers, I had to adjust one of them. The good thing about those drawer runners is they do offer a lot of adjustments. So unlike the hinges, I like the drawer runners. Once that is done, we got to put the handles back on and the magnets. And we can put back on the spice racks on the back of that larder door, which we took off earlier so we can paint it because it was easier that way instead of trying to tape them and cut in we can just remove them paint the whole door and then put them back on when the paint is dry and then we have the finished kitchen here now in all of my videos I try to give credit to the people who have made it to the end by telling you what the cost of this project was and the price that uh, our customer paid for this kitchen repaint was just under two and a half thousand pounds and that includes the main kitchen and the utility room that you will be seeing in a second i would uh, love to hear your thoughts on the the cost what do you think this is a expensive cheap or reasonably priced however as always i would ask you not to put the price in the comments that way i would know that anyone who's commented has watched it to the end thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one